What's up guys, San7 here, and here's Mastering Wave E on Here Be Monsters. Alright, Town Hall level 14. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find center, and by finding center you can just throw a couple troop camps, put them right next to each other, diamond, and then split the difference with your Town Hall. That is your dead center point. From there, you can kind of use it to wing off like I'm doing right here and to build your first box, to build your first diamond, because you're going to have a diamond on the top and a diamond on the bottom. And if you have a higher level town hall, you can expand a bit on the wings on the left and the right um, to make the enemy troops run a little farther. But there you go. We're going to just move that one bit because we need to add a layer of four right there at the longest point. So when the monsters come, they calculate, do I go through the walls or do I go around? That also comes into play is how, level, how high of a level your walls are. Because when the enemies reach your wall and decide whether to walk around or go through, they're going to calculate, well, does it take me longer to hit through it or walk around it? If you have all level one walls, level three walls, they're just going to hit through the walls. And then that's not what you want at all. You want them walking around the walls. So make sure your walls are proper level. That's one of the reasons that you could be having problems with your defense if your walls are not the proper level. All right, from there you can see I'm just repeating the diamond on the bottom and I'm just gonna go ahead and just throw a couple wings out on the left and the right and that's actually 10 walls on the left and the right. So if you're running a level 13 town hall, you don't need those little wings on the left and the right. You can get by without it. All right, from there, well, you see the center. That's the base of it. And I'm going to put my heroes in, and they're going to go dead center. You know, I'm, I put Thunder God as my central hero because, in my opinion, Thunder God is the MVP of Hero Monsters because of his AoE proc. It is absolutely crucial. And the next thing you're going to do is you're just going to make a couple diamonds, a couple triangles with your towers, and you can use either your vault or whatever building you have that has the most HP. This was a smurf, so my vaults are pretty high level, and those are the ones I'm using next to my two towers. From there... Just spread it out. So basically, when the hero, their enemy troops start attacking, they'll be getting a little bit of tower aggro. It'll help you a little bit. And also, I don't use troops, guys. Um, if I'm really trying to propel myself to, you know, pass the next level, I'll try to use it. But really, rule of thumb is don't use your troops. If you're having to use troops to get by a wave of fiery monsters, you should be farming the wave below it anyways. Now, if you're just trying to beat it to say, yes, I was able to beat F or whatever it is, most definitely go after the troops, but for an everyday, you know, farming over and over and over and over again, find a setup you don't need troops. All right, here we go in E1. What you're going to notice is they are going to have a hero explode. Their heroes do have talents. You can see right there that explosion, all that red that was popping up. That's the executioner exploding, and I think he does about 5,000 damage, which it really isn't a problem for my heroes, considering my heroes are all, um, they're all five stars. They're all between... I believe it's, what, 85 and 100? I don't have any leveled up to 6-star yet because of honor badge concerns. The Thunder God would have gone up there if I wouldn't have rolled the second Thunder God that has a 4-5 or five rewrite, and he, that second Thunder God is leveling up in a tower right now. And you'll notice, yes, I am using towers. I will be taking those towers away very soon um, once I get the feel for running E, because right now I'm running through this pretty easily. I believe I can step back on the towers, and the only heroes that I'm going to put in the towers are the ones that I want to level. Otherwise, having heroes in the tower, it's taking away the XP from my main heroes. Now, which heroes should I choose? You know, which heroes should you choose while doing Hebrew Monsters? Well, if you have a proper defense, uh, like the Death Box or the Diamond, a defense that is this style, that has their heroes taking a path to run all the way around to hit a tower, a gold mine, whatever it may be, you want heroes that do damage and do the most damage and swing quickly. Now, unfortunately, I'm using a Paladin and an AC. I'm handcuffing myself. You know, I didn't have the heroes um, to put in place of them until just now, after I just rolled Cupid and Champ, who will replace them. I also rolled a Succubus, who isn't a bad choice either. But both are better than the Paladin and the AC, because the AC swings only once every two seconds. That is slow. It takes seven swings, seven hits on an enemy, to reach your prop, to reach your special ability, the hero's special ability. Also, when the Paladin and the AC hit their special ability, well, it's pretty useless because, and with a proper defense, they're not taking aggro anyways. You can see Thunder God just procking, taking out the middle of the heroes. Love it. And you see how that vault right there? They're walking all the way around to get that vault. Thunder God just takes care of all the Griffins. And I'm going to walk through E4. Golden. All right. Now, I'm not really mining a top spawn, even though I have no towers there because I have to walk all the way around to the vault. That extra vault there, that's nice. Now, when you get the fifth tower, which comes at Town Hall level 17, that's where we'll go there. All right, we can see the dinos coming in. They do spawn on the top this time. And, well, when AC 
or the Paladin, they hit their Divine Shield, or AC hits his Invincibility, it's really only great if they're taking aggro like right now, when there's nothing left, they're swinging at my heroes, but that's rare. That doesn't happen very often. You're much better off having heroes that are going to take them out way before that even becomes a factor. Now, AC did help a little there on that Dino, and I gotta say, the Dino has a ridiculous amount of HP, and he stuns. That's going to be the hardest part getting by anything is the Dino on the last level. Any type of hero that you have that can kill quickly, that's a good thing. Now, also, heroes that just do AoE or hit multiple enemies with their proc. Even, even ordinary heroes like the Marksman, Engineer, they're not bad choices at all because they hit multiple enemies. Now, that would be Panda. Now, Panda's attack is slow as well. As Panda's attack is at 1.5 seconds. One attack, one, ah, one attack for every 1.5 seconds. So, you know, you can start to see, well, God, that's... That's nine seconds for a proc, right? Yeah. Versus every other hero is procking at seven. Now, Ninja. Ninja's fast. And he's at 0.8 seconds. So, he's a good hero for Here Be Monsters. Of course, the Reaper, uh, 0.8, I believe. Point, something like that for his attack speed. Another good one that I don't have. And also, the Reaper hits multiple targets. I highly suggest the Reaper for Here Be Monsters. If you have him, run him. i am kind of been... Flipping back and forth between Cube and the Reaper on my main account, and you know, that's yeah, pretty good. It's pretty tough to tell who's better. Now, Cupid, really good because it buffs the entire team, as does Pumpkin Duke. Unfortunately, Pumpkin Duke seems to be a very, very, very rare role. Uh, I would love to roll Pumpkin Duke, but I'm not going to dump in a ton of the, ah, dump in a ton of money. If I roll him, eh, I roll him. Get lucky. We'll see. Now, Champ is nice because Champ hits multiple targets with his proc, and he also stuns with that proc. That's always good, especially if you're dealing with a dino. And you can see right there, there's the Champ right there. Just go ahead and upgrade him a little bit because, like I said, I got these guys in the towers, and I want them upgrading, getting them up to level 60. Once I get to 60, because it costs 10,000 honor badges per level, I'll be much more selective on who I'm going to take up next, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be Champ. Now, why Champ? Well, because what, Ch what Champ does, that 3 second stun is absolutely crucial versus the boss. Now, getting to that stun versus the boss, that's the hard part. You have to have either a Revitalize on Champ or other heroes setting that up. Which, that's why that baby Thunder God that I rolled with 4 or 5 Revitalize, that is absolutely going to be money. Because I have a Paladin with Heavy Bow, so I drop the Paladin with Heavy, heavy Blow. As soon as he that Heavy Blow activates, you know, maybe it is 1 in every 10, but when it does, that's going to get my... Thunder God to that second half stun, and by then, well, Champ's going to get to that three second stun. Now, will it get me a stun chain? I don't think so just yet, but it'll probably put me on the leaderboards, giving me that much more HP per day. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and take a look at E1 again. We're just going to run it back. I got three waves of E, and I'm going to go ahead and try F. You know, I think I'm a little short for F, but that's all right. All right, well, they're going to come in there, and you can see there's that Executioner exploding. One of the things i got to say about the Diamond Defense is it, it seems kind of weak against Flyers, because you can see those Griffins right now. They're just swinging away on those towers. Luckily, uh, those Griffins, I don't know if they're level 2, level 1, somewhere around there. They're not doing that much damage, so it's not that big of a problem. And if you're wondering about the towers right now, those three towers, three of them, the, uh, the green, those are three Ordinaries in there. That give plus two, so that's plus six range for each of those towers, and that also means they target heroes only. And you can see right here, those two top towers are just pegging away on that, what is it, Serpent Queen? The Serpent Queen's going to be dead before she gets there, and as soon as she dies, well, it's going to start going after Panda. And Thunder God, gotta love him. He just takes out the troops as they go around. By the time these heroes get to the middle, there's going to be nothing left. Now, you notice that Griffin sitting up there by that gold mine, or gold vault, Eh, nothing's happening to him. He's not getting hit by anything. That's because they're targeting heroes first. As soon as their heroes die, well, target the towers. Go, oh, no heroes. Time to hit the troop. Now, you'll see that I'm running two of the purple. And uh, that is the legendary heroes that are in there. That'll probably be there for a while simply because it's a great way to level my heroes up like that. But in the end, once they're capped, they're out of my towers. And I want to split the experience five ways between the five guys that are on my hero bases unless there's there's a big if here the only time i don't want to do it is if it is preventing me from accomplishing say wave e in this situation if i take my garrisons out and i can't beat wave e should i step back and do d with only heroes no 
I need to continue and go through the... It's not just the five shards. It's the massive amount of experience jump you get from going from wave E, from wave D to wave E, from wave E to F, F to G, and so on and so forth. Now, in the beginning, going from B to C, they're not huge jumps. One of the things, you know, people are asking me, how do you power level heroes? Guys, it's here be monsters, and it's farming at high levels. My whole philosophy on this account, since I've started this Let's Play, has been build for here be monsters. I've leveled nothing but my town hall to get more walls. I've leveled my vaults. I'm sorry, not my vaults, my towers, my hero bases. You know, the towers are all level 7. Here we go on E5. They're going to take that down. Now it's going to be heroes versus heroes, but... My hero bases, this is where the hero bases really come into play, and they give my guys plus 2% on all stats for each level of that hero base. So that means I have level, a level 12 hero base out there for everybody. That's plus 24% on all the stats. That means Druid's going to heal for 24% more. That means my guys are going to have 20% more hit points to begin with. It's like adding a star and a half or more to your heroes. Level those hero bases. It's extremely important. All right, now we got another E. Oh, well, thirsty. Okay. They're going to come in on the top, and, well, it's going to split their troops. Which, that's another thing I like about this um, setup, is it splits troops nicely. Making, you know, the first few waves very easy to get through. And, well, we're going to lose a little bit on that tower on the top right, but no worries. Now, wh one of the things that having a lot of range on towers will do is prevent you from getting that one hero that's stuck just pounding away, or not hero, one, one of their enemy troops, like a griffin, a guardian, just hitting on a really, really high HP building, and, well, there, there's no damage to take, and it's not going to kill it, and you're going to run out of time. That's something you got to pay attention to. You can, what you can do is you can shift your buildings around, you can put the greens on the towers, which is a really great way to do it. Now, you will sacrifice a little bit of XP for that, because i got to say, the heroes that I have in there that are level 80, for my greens, my ordinaries, I'm not going to take them past 80 because it's a 20,000 HP upgrade. And it gets expensive when you start upgrading. That's one of the things that I've really been thinking about what troop to take up next, especially having the second Thunder God who's going to be taking up the honor badges from me. I have to decide, you know, who's going. You can see that Paladin, Thunder God, capped at 100. Both of them are going to stay at 100. That Thunder God will probably be there forever because the revitalized Thunder God, the one I am leveling up from zero. I will eventually consume the other Thunder God. Talents are more important than the hero. So if you have a level 70, 80, 90 something hero, but then you roll a duplicate that has an amazing talent, level the old one up. Now, when does it, what level does it become more efficient to try to reroll that talent? That's really up to how much you want to spend. Because getting a hero from level 0 to level 120, yeah, it takes a while, but it really doesn't take that long once you're farming G. So really kind of where you are in the game will decide that for you, but if you get a hero with a 5 of 5 talent like Revitalize, Berserk on some heroes depending, Sprint, you know, really think about leveling the new one up and stop throwing honor badges into the old one. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get back into the action here. Looks like getting through E4 pretty easily. And that tower's going to go. No, yeah, tower's still alive. All right. All right, one the, pay attention to the bonus that comes from the end of this one versus the bonus that's going to come from failing on wave F. All right, they're going to come in on the bottom, and that tower has absolutely no health left, so it's going to go down very quickly, but Thunder God's going to proc right on the dino. That proc on the dino slowing him up is huge because that dino, when he procs, he has that stun. You can see three of my heroes just, they can't move. AC goes off, and from there, well... It's pretty much going to end it. The mecha men are going to just swing away, but hey, got all five heroes going after him. No problem. And I got to say, I have not had any issues going through E, which before with the box that I was running, the death box that I was running, I was like 50-50. Not much has changed since then. So you can see walls level 9, tower level 7. That's when I'm running inside the towers. And, well, what do we got going on here? All right, if you're interested in... The guild, Niggy and Friends, um, please contact Red Dragon on line chat. It's Red Dragon 1144. I'll leave it in the description. Um, basically, he's the one running the guild right now. He's the VP, a.k.a. leader, because I'm basically all over the place at the moment. And, yeah, so just contact him. And I'm going to go ahead and put that right there. So that's his line chat ID if you need to get in touch with him. Now, guys, we are full right now. 
and please don't go bombard him with messages. Wait till we expand. Because when we do expand, that's the time to go talk to him. So pay attention. You know, I'll do a video when we expand. I'll let you know, hey, we got five spots open, guys. You know, you might want to apply now. So just keep that in mind. All right, we're going to try F. And F, this is the first try with F on this account. And I'm not expecting to beat this. I'm really expecting that I'm going to need to swap out a couple heroes, add more DPS to my, to my squad, basically get rid of Paladin, get rid of AC, and add Cupid and Champ. You know, I'm thinking that's really... What's going to have to um, change for me to beat Wave F and beat Wave F on a consistent basis? I'm probably going to need a tower to each tower to level up a level and the hero base is maybe a level or two up. Um, because the two limiting factors that you're going to have when trying to beat a wave that's in, you know in each increasing wave in Hero B Monsters is how fast your heroes can kill and how long your tanks can survive. Your tanks being my towers... My gold vault, those are my tanks. And with a proper defense, you're going to have something, some type of building that is going to be your tank. You don't want your heroes tanking. Therefore, if you already have a tank, well, you want to bring out all offensive heroes. So that's really my next goal is to get some offensive heroes out there. I'm still farming away. I think I'm going to go ahead and purchase Ninja with the shards, but I, I'm kind of iffy on that. I might decide to buy some skill levels and hope to roll them eventually. Who knows? But, well, here we go through F2. Looking good so far after after F2. Nope, trouble's right now, but, well, it's gonna get much more difficult. Alright, here they spawn right here on F3 on the top right, which isn't a bad spawn. Uh, you'll see Ninja's the first one that's gonna come in there. He's gonna die quickly. Then we're gonna run into the four legendary, and they're not gonna swing at any of my guys until that tower goes down. I got unlucky there that Succubus procced on that tower before she died. If my guys were hitting harder, more DPS, that succubus goes down. You know, the single hero that would get me through this on a consistent basis is Pumpkin Duke. Having that ability to buff everyone around him and increase that attack speed, that attack, that movement speed, it is absolutely money. Pumpkin Duke is probably... Uh, he might be up there with Thunder God for a Hero B Monster MVP, but he's a very rare role, so that's something that I'll just have to wait and see if I get. All right, here we go on F4. It's a good spawn because... Well, I have everything just down on the bottom, still good to go. I lose that first tower, and you see, once I lose that tower, where does the aggro go? It goes on to my heroes. In this situation, if I had a higher level tower, or if I had heroes killing quicker, well, I might not have lost Druid, I might not have lost Nozilla, and going into wave F5, I might not just be left with two heroes. Because two heroes versus this, and neither of them even have their hero base, I've got no chance. And like I said, if you have... A Town Hall level 13, those little wings out there to the left and the right of the entrance. You can just take those away and you can run with um, a lower level Town Hall. Alright, well here it, here's the end of it right here. And you can see as soon as my tank dies, it's just my two heroes. Even though AC puts that shield up, well, there's a cooldown on the shield. AC's dead. The only thing left is the tower that's going to go very, very quickly. And that's the end of that. But I'm not far from being able to beat F. Really, I'm not, I'm not worried about beating it yet because I can't farm it. I can farm, I can farm E with a very high consistency. That's going to propel this account way up. I will run the Honor Badge problems, though, so hopefully the update on Might is going to really help with that because both accounts are needing it. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Till the next one, Sand7 out.